Hi, my name is Shahroz Ahmed and uh, in this video I'm going to explain you the chapter number 10 of IGCSC O-Level Physics that is about the temperature. So let's start off. So in this chapter first of all we have to discuss the physical properties of the substances that changes with the change in temperature. So for example the physical properties that we can consider are the volume if what happens to the volume if we increase or decrease the temperature the next thing is the resistance what happens to the resistance of a substance if we increase or decrease the temperature the third thing that we have to discuss is the color what happens to the color if we increase or decrease the temperature now these properties are for some specific substances so we will discuss those substances over here and um, the next one is the emission of infrared radiations emission of IR infrared radi radiations so let's start off with the volume first of all so what happens to the volume if we increase the temperature or decrease the temperature so in this case we will discuss the examples of the alcohol and mercury alcohol and mercury now if we increase the temperature of alcohol it, its volume increases it expands if we increase the temperature of the mercury same happens with the mercury as well it expands its volume increases so the physical property that uh, the physical property that changes for alcohol and mercury with the increase in temperature is their volume now let's discuss about resistance so we have a certain type of uh, resistor whose name is uh, thermistor so thermistor is basically it's a heat sensitive resistor so if we increase the temperature the resistance of the thermistor decreases so the effect of temperature on, on the resistance is the change in, in the resistance it decreases so that is the physical property of that substance that changes with the change in the temperature the third thing that we have to discuss is the color so there are some heat sensitive liquid crystals heat sensitive liquid crystals so there are some heat sensitive liquid crystals whose temp whose color changes with the increase or decrease in temperature so the next thing that we have to discuss is the emission of R. so basically when the temperature increases the emission of the infrared radiations from any given source increases it could be any heat source so we, the more we increase the temperature, the more emission of infra infrared radiations we can observe. And uh, you can think of um, stove. You can think of stove. If you increase the heat, if you increase the flame, the IR increases, in infrared radiations increases. So these are some of the physical properties of the substances that change with the change in temperature. All right. Now in the next uh, next part, we have to discuss the need for the fixed point. So why do we need the fixed points to measure the temperature? alright so the need for the fixed points so we need the fixed points to to set a referral point for the temperature for example we can we can fix a point as the melting point of the ice and the boiling point of the ice so we can say that the ice point ice point so we can say that the temp the point at which the ice melts will be the melting point and the temperature over there will be equal to 0 degree Celsius and the next point that we can fix for is steam point so we can say that the steam point is the point at which the water boils and we can give them a number that is 100 right now I, I'm not gonna write that degree Celsius thing I'm just gonna write 0 and 100 so the point at which the ice melts we can say that it's the ice point and we give them a number zero and the point at which the water boils it's called the steam point and we, we give that uh, we, we give it the number hundred now between these two points we make 100 divisions and each division will be considered as one degree Celsius so we can say the ice point or the melting point of the ice is at zero degree Celsius and the steam point or the boiling point of the uh, of the water is at 100 degrees Celsius and we make 100 divisions between the ice point and the steam point and each division will be considered as 1 degree Celsius so in order to 
make a referral point for the temperature to for our for for the better understanding of this uh, temperature thing or how we can relate the temperature in a better way we use the fix we use the fixed points for the um, for the water or for any substances now the next thing that we have to discuss is about the sensitivity the range and the linearity of the thermometers okay so till till this point we use the thermometers to measure the temperature and within those thermometers we use the liquid and uh, the physical change that we see in the liquids is the change in in their volume so when the temperature increases their volume increases so till now we are using either alcohol thermometers or the mercury thermometers so whenever their temperature increases the alcohol or the mercury will expand all right so let's discuss the sensitivity range and linearity of those thermometers so the sensitivity of thermometers so i'll just try to define it how we can define the sensitivity of the thermometer so i'll write it uh, the definition for it or just for our understanding i can say the degree of change the degree of change in the reading of the thermometer of the thermometer with by the change in temperature by the change in temperature defines its sensitivity defines its its sensitivity okay so the more change with that the more change in the reading that we observe in the thermometer with the with the less change in the temperature we can say that that thermometer is more sensitive if we see less change in the reading of the thermometer with more change in the uh, in uh, with more change in the temperature then we can say the thermometer is less sensitive so this is how you can relate the sensitivity of the thermometer more change in reading means it's more sensitive less change in reading which means it's less sensitive all right now the next thing that we have to discuss is the range of thermometer how we can define the range of the thermometer so i'll just um, erase it so the range of thermometer can be defined as the the minimum and or we can say the minimum to the maximum reading that can be measured by a thermometer by a thermometer is called its range for example the alcohol based thermometer it measures the temperature up till 78 degrees celsius so we cannot uh, measure the boiling point of the water from the alcohol thermometer so in order to measure the boiling point of water we need the mercury thermometer whose range is more than 100 degrees celsius so with the help of the mercury thermometer we can we are able to measure the temperature on the boiling point of the water so the maximum temperature that the alcohol thermometer can measure is 78 so its range is up till 78 degrees celsius so this is what um, the range of thermo thermometer is called now the next concept that we have to discuss is the linearity so we can define the linearity as the change in the reading of the thermometer thermometer should be directly proportional to the change in temperature directly proportional to the change in temperature for example let me just write it down so for example we have a thermometer like this 
let me just write and draw this is the thermometer like this so if and, and there are some divisions let's suppose there are 100 divisions and each division is of uh, one millimeter one division is equal to one millimeter so with the increase in one degree celsius the change in the level of the mercury should be equal to one millimeter if there is a change in temperature of three degrees celsius then the change in the um, level of mercury should be equal to three millimeters if the change is 10 degrees celsius then the change in for the for the level of mercury should be equal to 10 millimeters so that is called linearity of thermometers for equal increase in temperature the expansion of the volume should be should in should ex, uh, should increase linearly it should not increase exponentially so we prefer such thermometers that are linear so that that is the reason uh, that we do not use the water in the thermometers because the expansion of water is uh, not linear we might discuss in in our topic but uh, for till here you can just say that um, mercury and alcohol they have the linear expansion so that is why we use them in our thermometers all right so now after this one we have to discuss the concept of thermocouple so let me just erase it so thermocouple it is a type of thermometer it is a type of thermometer that generates some voltage based on the difference in the temperature difference in the temperature between two points so thermocouple is basically it's a type of thermometer that generates some voltage and uh, we determine the temperature with the help of that uh, generated voltage so what happens in is let's suppose this is a thermocouple this is the meter of the thermocouple one end of the meter is placed in some cold place you can say this is the room temperature that cold place and one end of the thermocouple is placed in a very high temperature area so usually we use the thermocouple to measure um, to measure the temperature where the temperature is very high so we let's suppose if you want to measure the temperature of some furnace so over there the temperature is like around 800 degrees celsius 1000 degrees celsius or like 1500 degrees celsius so what we do is we put one end of the thermocouple in some cold place or some uh, some point where we already know the temperature let's suppose for this example i take it as the room temperature so this end is at 28 degrees celsius or 26 degrees celsius and the other end is in the furnace where the temperature is let's suppose 1000 200 degrees celsius so based on this temperature difference it will generate some voltage so let's suppose the scale of the thermometer is that for each degree it generates 0 0.1 millivolts so by measuring the difference between them so if we measure the difference between them it will be like one like one one seven two degrees celsius so this is the difference in the temperature so for each degree let's suppose that voltage that is generated generated is 1 millivolt so for this one it will generate it will generate 1172 times 0 0.1 millivolts it will generate 117.2 millivolts or we can say 0 0.1172 volts so this will be the voltage that will be generated based on the difference between the temperature of the two ends of the thermocouple so this is such a thermometer that we can use for in order to measure uh, very high temperatures all right now let's talk about the sensitivity of the thermocouple so the sensitivity depends on the scale of the thermocouple that we have used the sensitivity depends on this scale factor if we take 
more voltage for each degree each rise in uh, the degree celsius then our sensitivity will increase if we take less voltage for each increase in degree celsius then our sensitivity will decrease so it all depends on the ratio or the scale factor that of the voltage that we are using in our thermocouple so it can be highly sensitive it can be less sensitive but usually because it is used to measure very high temperatures where one the change in one degree celsius or five degrees celsius, celsius does not make any difference so usually the sensitivity of thermocouple is uh, lesser because we use uh, we use the thermocouple to measure uh, very high temperatures all right now we have to discuss the sensitivity the range and the linearity of the liquid thermometers like we have already discussed that what's the what is sensitivity range or linearity but now we have to see the structure of the of the liquid thermometer that could affect its sensitivity the linearity and the range so let me just erase it and then i'll show you that all right so the structure of liquid liquid in thermometers it's it's the one word liquid in now I'm going to draw three liquid thermometers and then I'll compare their sensitivity, their range and their linearity. All right, so here I have uh, drawn two thermometers. You can see over here one is a bit wider and the other one is a bit thinner. Now, let's suppose 4 degree there's a increase in temperature of 4 degrees. So for this thermometer, the rise in the volume will be lesser. And for this thermometer, the rise in the volume will be more. So we can say that this one is less sensitive because we have seen less change, uh, less increase in the length as compared to this one. So this will be more sensitive because we can see more increase in the length with an increase in the temperature. By the way. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you over here that liquid in both of them is same it is uh, alcohol or mercury so both of them have let's suppose both of them have uh, uh, both of them have the liquid of mercury in them all right so this one is less sensitive this one is more sensitive all right S sensitivity is done now let's discuss about the range now as you can see over here this is wider and this is thinner so for the fixed amount of length this thermometer can measure more temperature as compared to this thermometer for example this thermometer can measure the temperature from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius and this thermometer can measure the temperature from 0 degree celsius to 25 degree celsius so we can say that if the width of the thermo thermometer is wider and uh, the the lengths of the both the thermometers are same then the thermometer whose width is wider will have more range as compared to the other thermometer so this one will have more range and this one will have less range so range is done now the next thing that we have to discuss is the linearity now the structure the structure of the thermometer cannot change the linearity because the linearity of the thermometer depends on the liquid that has been used inside it if we use the water it's not linear so we that's why we do not use the water in the uh, in the thermometers if we use alcohol or the mercury they are, they both are linear so the increase in uh, the increase in the temperature will increase the length linearly so the linearity does, uh, the linearity of the thermometer does not depend on the structure of the thermometer it depends on the liquid that is inside the thermometer so this is done as well so these are some of the concept that you sh that you must know in the temp in the chapter of thermometers so i hope you like my video and uh, if you have any question just to come just to ask in the comment section i'll reply over there and uh, thank you so much for watching the video